Good morning and Merry Christmas. Thank you for joining us today. If you are watching this on Sunday, December 18th, before 11 a.m., put your shoes on, get in the car, and come to the Rio Theater. We're taking over the Rio Theater for a Christmas service with all three locations together. I hope you'll join us. If you are not able to, or you're watching this later, that's why we're recording this, just for you. Have you ever had something go wrong on Christmas that ruined Christmas? When Jenny and I were newly married in 2000, we were given a gift. I don't know if you call it a gift, but our friends gave us a little gray stray cat. And we were so excited to decorate for Christmas. One of my favorite things when I was a kid was to go and cut down a Christmas tree. I loved it so much that, in fact, one time I tried to cut down the tree in front of my parents' house. They didn't like that very much. Uh, but they did let me cut down the Christmas tree when we went. And so when Jenny and I were planning our first Christmas, we didn't have a lot of money. And so we actually spent almost all of our Christmas money on decorations, some bulbs, and some lights for our new Christmas tree. And we went out in our little blue Toyota truck and we cut down probably the ugliest Christmas tree you would ever see because we felt bad for it that no one else was gonna take it. And we took this little ugly tree in the back of my truck but we decorated that thing to the nines, man. We had the new bulbs on there. We had new lights. We even strung together popcorn, sat there for hours with Christmas music, just enjoying ourselves, eating some cookies. I'll never forget it. It was a great time. And so we were so excited once we decorated our tree. Couldn't wait to show our family. Well, the next morning was Sunday. It was church, and we were youth pastors at our church. And so we went to church, and then afterwards we, we brought my parents over to see the tree for the great unveiling. And as we opened the door, nothing could prepare us for what we saw. Our tree had been knocked over and smashed, and the house reeked with the pungent smell of cat urine. We were so happy with our cat, Samson. We gave him a gift also. We took him to the vet and got him neutered. Merry Christmas. Just kidding. We actually did. But um, <laughs> we, we were, oh man, we were so bummed. We had this beautiful tree. It was all set up and he just destroyed it while we were gone. Somehow he climbed up and knocked the tree over and broke half of the bulbs. And you know what? If our focus wasn't on the real meaning of Christmas, we would have been pretty bummed. But thankfully, we were, we were so grateful just to be together and just to have Christmas that it didn't really phase us. Have you ever wondered where the history of the Christmas tree comes from? Did you know that it's actually not a Christian thing? And prior to the 1600s in Germany, it was, it was a pagan uh, symbol of the winter solstice. But in the 1600s in Germany, the Protestants actually made it a tradition. And the famous Martin Luther, who was known for lighting theological fires, he came up with this grand idea of putting candles on a tree and that's where we get the candlelight service that's where we get the lights on the tree it was from martin luther representing the light of the world which is a cool picture but probably was pretty dangerous back in the beginning and did you know that in the 18 up until the 1800s it was illegal to decorate for christmas in the u.s um, because of the devout uh christians that they they only would allow you to decorate in the church but you were not allowed to decorate for christmas in your home until the famous Queen Victoria, she married a German man named Prince Albert, and they decorated a Christmas tree in the royal family. And an image of that went around the East Coast, and it was on, man. And in, in American fashion, we had to one-up them. Instead of the four-foot tree with apples and walnuts and the such decorating it, Americans took it to a whole new level from floor to ceiling, with ornaments and bulbs. Now we've got the Rockefeller Center. We've got the Disneyland tree, the towers among. I mean, these are massive trees, right? Um, it's now become a very uh, fun tradition that we decorate trees. Now, while Christmas trees aren't in the Bible, there's a very important theme that has to do with trees that we're going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about two trees in the Bible. And it starts in the very beginning in the book of Genesis. 
when you start to turn the first pages, you can see that God created the world and he created humanity to dwell in his garden with God in relationship, in his presence. And there's a tree in the middle of the garden called the tree of life that God created us to experience the fullness of life and, and for eternity that we were not to experience death. That's why it feels so weird when we go through that. But there was also another tree in the garden. And God gave us the choice. He said, hey, don't, cho don't choose. Don't eat from this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's kind of like God saying, hey, all this is good. It's for you. Except there's this one thing I'm going to hold back, this judgment, this knowledge of good and evil. That's for me. That's only, only I can do that. And, and so I'm going to hold that back from you. Um, but why is it in humanity that we always want to do but the one thing we can't do? We're not supposed to do, right? And so Adam and Eve made that choice, but all of humanity's made that choice to choose life outside of God. Like, I want to be God of my own life. And what that did was it brought about a curse. And this curse brought about death and destruction, kind of like my cat, <laughs> and suffering and sin and pain and violence into the world. It doesn't take very long before you see the generations turning violent and evil and the brokenness. And that's why we have these moments of beauty, right? You're walking through the forest and nice marks in the redwoods, or you're on the beach in Davenport watching the sunset, and you're like, wow, this is beautiful. You can experience a little taste of heaven, but then you get back on the road or you get back on the news and you see the brokenness that pervades in the world. And what I want to just say is that there is a curse. There is a brokenness. Um, but there's, there's also hope. Because when you read to the end of the story, there's another tree. There's another tree of life. And I want to read that to you today from Revelation chapter 22. This is really good news. Take a look at this. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life. Right? And this is, this is also from the garden. There was these rivers that ran through it, right? As clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. Now, this is really good news because this is the last page in the Bible. Remember, we started in the beginning and there's a tree of life. Well, on the very last page of the Bible, there's another tree and it's the tree of life. And uh, it says right here that there will no longer be any curse. What is the curse? The curse is death. It's what happened in the garden when humanity chose to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In other words, to make, to, to make the choice to, to be the God of our own lives and to do it our way instead of God's way. And it leads to destruction. It leads to violence. It leads to death and suffering and pain. And we've all experienced a little taste of that. It continues on to say, with more good news, the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. They will see his face. That's a big deal. And his name will be on their foreheads. Now, this isn't just poor tattoo placement. This is a, a symbol saying that when, when God had made this promise, I will be your God and you will be my people, right? You, we, we're a, we belong. We belong to our God. And that's what that symbol is. And we're going to see his face. It says there will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light. And they will reign forever and ever. The angel said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophet, sent his angel to show his servants the thing that must soon take place. Look, I am coming soon. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Now, this connects us to the story of, of Christmas, right? Uh, of the, the star of Bethlehem and Jesus being the bright and morning star. And, and the claim that he is the Messiah, the one that the people had been waiting for, the great king that would come and restore all things. 
He continues on to say, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. Wow, this is really hopeful. And considering it's the last page of the Bible, um, but we also live in between two trees, right? We live in between. There's a tree in the garden in the beginning, and there's this tree that God is promising us someday to restore. But we live in the middle. And what I want to tell you today, this is the big idea. Hope, Christmas is hope for the in-between. Even though we live in the in-between. And maybe for some of you, Christmas, it brings up some of that pain because of your family or because of what you've been through or, or past memories. And I just want to encourage you today that Christmas is the hope for the in-between. Number one, I have three thoughts for you today. Number one is that hope has a name. Hope isn't just an idea. It's not just an empty promise or a wish. Oh, I wish things will get better. Hope has a name. And Christmas is the birthday of hope. Did you know that when Jesus was born, he fulfilled over 500 specific prophecies about his life that were written hundreds of years prior. And he came as a humble king, born of a virgin, born into the in-between. He, he, he came in a time of brokenness where it was so bad that he actually had to, his parents had to flee for his life when he was a baby. Um, they were born and there was no place for them in the, in the inn when he was born. And so he had to be born amongst stable animals, uh, farm animals, um, in, in, in some kind of a cave or stable that was for animals. Um, I mean, Jesus was born into obscurity in humility um, and, and under persecution of the Roman Empire of that day. But hope has a name. And, and Christmas is hope for the in-between. Hebrews six nineteen says, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Not only is, does hope have a name, peace is a person. I think that's something that people are looking for this time of year is peace. Real peace. Where does real peace come from? Well, what I want to tell you today is not only does God have peace, does he give peace, but he himself is peace. And that's what Christmas is about. It's about restoring relationship with God and having real peace, restoring life and restoring peace. Isaiah 9, 6, this is one of those prophetic words about who Jesus would be written hundreds of years before by the prophet Isaiah. It says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Ephesians 2.14 says, For he himself is our peace. If you're looking for peace today, I want to encourage you. It's not just an ideology. It's a person. And his name is Jesus. Hope has a name. Peace is a person. And finally, joy is his presence. You want to look for, for real joy? I, I think that's something we're all looking for, is happiness. But the problem with happiness is it's fleeting, Right? You, you think if I get this or if I get that, uh, that, that thing or that item or that house or that job or that, that success or maybe a million followers on your, your social media, whatever, whatever you, what you think happiness will come from, we achieve that, we get that, and then we find that there's always more and it's, it doesn't really bring true happiness. And what we can experience through the presence of God is true joy that is is supersedes our circumstances that is above what's going on around us because it's anchored into something real look at what it says in the, the christmas story um, speaking to these these shepherds who were not they were they were considered kind of like dirty right they were this was like the lowest job they weren't even allowed to go to church because of their job that's how dirty these guys were they lived in the fields with sheep at night and that's who God chooses to announce his birth. How cool is that? Look at this. Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 11. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. 
There's a message there. It's for all the people. And there's going to be real joy. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. Like, I mean, most people didn't even know who Jesus was while he was walking the earth. And here God's like rolling out the red carpet for these shepherds in the field, man. I don't know about you, but that gives me hope. Like, because I think a lot of times we don't identify as insiders. Most of us identify as outsiders. And God is the God and the outsider and the lowly and those that maybe don't feel like they can make it. And that's me. And that's you. And God comes to us to give us real joy. I love what Psalm 16 says about joy. It says, You will show me the path of life. Your, in your presence is fullness of joy. We want to experience real joy. It comes from his presence. And that's what Christmas is all about. Is God, the advent, is, it means coming. God is coming. And, and Jesus, his name is Emmanuel, God with us. He, he came to live among us, to walk among us. And, and so that we can experience his presence and who he is. And his promises that he's coming again, right? Even though my cat ruined Christmas, I mean, in every possible way, we, we were poor. We spent all of our money on the tree that my cat ruined and peed in my, my living room. And then, um, you know, I was working on staff at this large church and we had nine Christmas Eve services. It was crazy. We were exhausted. And by every measure, it was like the worst Christmas ever. But you know what? It was the best because Jenny and I were together and we knew the real meaning of Christmas. We had real joy. And I just want other people to experience that because it's so cool when you are anchored into your relationship with God, no matter what you go through, he's with you. And you can experience his peace, his hope, and his joy for the in-between. We, we live in between the two trees right now. There's the tree that God, we're all kind of like longing for that garden of connection with God. And we, we, we taste it a little bit in his creation. But we all realize that we're not, we're not living in that. And there's this longing for this someday when God is going to come and restore all things. But we live in between the two trees. But what I want to tell you today is that you can still experience hope, real hope. You can still experience hope peace, and you can still experience joy in between the two trees. Christmas is hope for the in-between, and his name is Jesus. Christmas is all about Jesus. God coming to earth as a baby. That is just mind-blowing when you think about what God did to walk among us. And the birth of Jesus was the first eviction notice that God sent to the curse of sin and death. The story of Christmas actually involves a third tree I want to talk about. Because of the curse, because of the choices of humanity to choose not love, to choose to, to not go God's way, we opened up the world to this curse that we're all under. And the third tree looks like a cross. Scripture says that for he himself bore our sins on the tree. Jesus went to the cross. It was said in that day that anything that hung from a tree was cursed. He took the curse on himself on a tree. And if that was the end of the story, it would be a really good one. That God came to earth and took the curse and he died for our sins. But it doesn't end there. It ends with hope that Jesus rose from the dead walked among his followers, was seen by hundreds of people. It's the most well-documented event in ancient history that Jesus rose from the dead. And then before ascending to be with the Father, he promised that he would come again. He, he gives us this promise. I am coming soon. We have this promise that Jesus is coming back to restore all things, to bring back the tree of life. And to bring back the connection, the restoration of his kingdom. This is really good news. And that's what Christmas is all about. He's coming again. His promise is to restore all things in the fulfillment of hope. And because of that, we can have hope for the in-between. I want to pray with you today as we conclude the, this time 
Um, and I just want to ask you, like, where do you need hope for the in-between? Where do you need joy and peace right now? And how could you experience the fullness of peace and joy and hope if you put your focus more on Jesus this Christmas? And for some of you, my question to you is, will you receive the greatest gift of all history this Christmas? The cool thing is, just like a gift under the tree, you don't have to earn it. It's a gift. Because Jesus took the curse on that tree, you can experience the tree of life as a free gift. And all you have to do is simply unwrap the gift. I don't know about you, but if my name's on a gift on the tree, I'm not leaving it there. I'm opening it up. And I hope today you'll open it up simply by A, admit that you need a Savior, that you need Jesus. B, believe that He took the, cur the curse for you, that He died on that tree and rose from the dead. And then C, commit to walk a new path in following Jesus. Doesn't mean perfection. It's more about direction. That I'm turning my life to walk toward Jesus because he's the one that gives me the strength to even do that. If that's you today, I want to encourage you to take a moment to pray. And you can join me in this prayer right now. God, thank you that you love me so much to create me for eternal life. And I admit that I am part of the curse. Not only have I been affected by that, but I've been part of it too. And the brokenness of this world um, belongs to me. But you died in my place. You took the curse so I can be forgiven, so I can be healed and free. And so, Lord, I just put my faith and trust in you today. And I commit to walk a new path. I commit to follow you. And, Lord, I just want to pray for everyone out there right now that's watching this. And maybe they're alone. Or maybe this time of year, it really brings up the brokenness of this world for them. And I pray that you would meet them in the in-between right now. That you would restore hope. That you would, you would uh, Lord, bring about peace. Cover them with a blanket of peace. And then fill them with the joy that comes from a relationship with you, Lord. I pray that you would help us to keep our eyes on you as we live in between the two trees. And help us to be people that bear hope to others, Lord. I pray that you would show us who around us needs to experience the hope that we have because of the, the new life that you've given us, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Um, I hope that you will join us again next Sunday, but we're going to be online only because Christmas lands on a Sunday next week, and so it'll be available on uh, Christmas Eve, or you can watch it Sunday morning. We're going to have a special family Christmas live stream that's going out for you guys. Um, and then also, if you want to attend a service on New Year's Day, we're going to be closed at all of our locations except for Scotts Valley. We're going to have a 10 a.m. service in Scotts Valley if you're looking for an in-person or we'll be online as well. And then we're going to be regathering at all three locations again on January 8th. I hope you'll join us in the new year. We're going to be kicking off a new series called Brand New Day. And we're going to hear some testimonies. It's going to be encouraging um, based upon the scripture in Lamentations where it says his mercies are new every morning. Thank God that he, he makes all things new and he's working in us to make all things new as well. God bless you and Merry Christmas.